Well, Baltimore's mayor is coming under fire amid all of this for some remarks she made after the protests had turned violent over the weekend. Listen to what she said. Listen carefully. While we uh, try to make sure that they were protected from the cars and the other you know, things that were going on, um, we also gave those who wished to destroy space to do that as well. And we uh, worked very hard to, uh, to keep that balance and, and to put ourselves in the best position to de-escalate. Did you hear that? We gave those who wished to destroy space to do that as well. But then today, Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake suggested that she never said that, that she never was leaving, quote, space for folks to destroy any part of her city. Listen. I never said, nor would I ever say, that we are giving people space to destroy our city. So my words should not be twisted. And then, uh, well, we'll get into what she said next. Mark Furman is with me now. He's a Fox News contributor and a former LAPD homicide detective. Richard Fowler is a national, nationally syndicated radio host. Um, you know, then she came out and lashed out at the media for twisting her words. Listen here. Listen to her blaming the media. It is very unfortunate that members of your industry decided to mischaracterize my words and try to use it as a way to say that we're inciting violence. There's no such thing. Mark, I mean, her words stand. That The viewers just have to listen with their own ears. Well, Megan, when you listen to her words, <clears throat> it's very clear that she said that. And it's very clear that she was trying to give all these protesters slash rioters a uh, chance to uh, blow off steam and then stop. It didn't happen. But notwithstanding that, she is so far over her head when it comes to leadership. She is not taking any kind of leadership role in this city, and she did not do what she needed to do. And I'd just like to bring up one little thing here. A freedom to assemble under the First Amendment does not mean you stop traffic, stop commerce, stop pedestrians, stop vehicles. That is not a lawful assembly. If you want to make believe it's a lawful assembly, you in fact are breaking the law yourself. So just because the mayor says so doesn't make it so. It was an unlawful assembly from the onset. Mm -hmm. We are watching the National Guard arriving now in Baltimore. We believe they're about to come out of the vehicle you're watching here, um, sent to try to keep the peace in a city that's been burning tonight. Richard, what of this mayor? Because her detractors, the reason they seized upon that comment, obviously, was that she seemed to be going down a slippery slope in allowing anybody, quote, room to destroy. And now that we've seen plenty of destruction, she comes out and tells us she never said it. But through the magic of videotape, we know that she did. So here's the thing, Megan, and her, her staff sort of released a statement after that saying what the, what the mayor was trying to say, and I think in the heat of the moment, what she was trying to say was, we're going to give space for those who want to okay. peacefully assemble and let peacefully protest to do so. Okay, that's, okay, let me stop you there. If that's, her staff what, happens, has this if back. that's what happens, if that's what happens, you say something wrong, we've all been there, then you, then you come out and you say, you know what, I, I didn't say it right, and, and I was right to get the blowback. But what she did tonight was to come out and say this is not a creation of her making, that the media somehow misrepresented her message and therefore casts blame. But the media didn't misrepresent her message, and just so the viewers can hear it for themselves, we butted the two sound bites together. Listen, listen to what she says and what she now claims she didn't say. While we uh, try to make sure that they were protected from the cars and the other you know, things that were going on. Um, we also gave those who wished to destroy space to do that as well. And we uh, worked very hard to, uh, to keep that balance. I never said, nor would I ever say, that we are giving people space to destroy our city. So my words should not be twisted. Richard? Listen, I, I, like I said, I think that there was clearly some miscalculation, a misstep in her statement. I think what the, the intention of the statement was to walk back, or when her staff tried to walk, they tried to walk back the part about like she's giving space for people to peacefully protest. Then why does she come out and say that the ever, media mischaracterized think, her words and tried to use it? The media reported the facts of what she said. And the reason this is controversial, I'm not trying to exonerate the media. Nobody cares about the media. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get to whether she 
has some responsibility here for setting a tone in Baltimore that destruction I, would be tolerated. Absolutely. Megan, I don't, I, don't think, I don't think for one absolutely. second that... Uh, let, we'll let, me, let me get Mark. Mark the chance to respond. Go ahead. You know, Megan, it is crystal clear what she said, and her ideology preceded leadership of her city. That's it in a nutshell. Now, because there is a riot, and now because 15 officers went to the hospital, she's trying to rewrite history and backfill the words that she said. She said it. She's got to own it. What Richard says is not a miscalculation. She flat out Mark. said it. I'm allowing Mark. people the space really, to destroy. I mean, do you, do you not understand the English language? You, what are, did she say? I per, I per, trust me, I understand yes, the English language. Yes, I am language saying that. You think. But the point I'm trying to make here, Mark, and I think this is the point, and the viewers at home can get this, is that there's no mayor in the world, or in the, yes, in the world, that is the best way, that would want people to destroy the city that they're in charge of. So it's buffoonery I think we to can believe all agree that you're Today, to because now you have one. You, I think we can no. agree that she didn't want to see Baltimore Thank destroyed, you. Richard. But the but the question is whether, a, a, in, out of a desire to be politically correct, to bend over backwards to let these protesters have their say, it, uh, not understanding the risks of what I mean, it's not like we haven't seen this. It's not like we didn't see recently what can happen in protests that go wrong, especially when they're exploited by ne'er do wells. She knew. We all knew. We'd just seen this. So did she but, have but a responsibility Megan, uh, to, to, make... to follow the Giuliani rule? And you heard Hannity talking about it earlier. The first rock that is thrown, you are, you're done. You're arrested and you send a message to everybody but I else. Make a big, that I will not make a be big tolerated. I want to make a distinction here, and I'll continue to make this distinction. I think there's a big distinction from peaceful protests, which we saw throughout the week, and some this morning, to what we're seeing today and when the first rock was thrown. Right. Peaceful protesters weren't throwing rocks. Right, but she's and saying that we allow people space to destroy. And I think... And I think there's a conflation between the two, which is where you get to this, you know, headline sort of saying protesters are rioting, rioters are rioting, thugs are looting, not peaceful protesters. Unfortunately, when you sign up to go on these let, protest let, let's, march, let, Mark, let's, you don't always, you don't only, always get only the Boy Scouts. Uh, well, that's true. And, and let's, Richard, Richard is correct that some peaceful protesters do fade in the background and people that are more aggressive come to the forefront. But they're, they're interchangeable. And does anybody no, uh, they're not, Mark. that's watching they're not. these videos, no, just Richard, Richard. Listen to so me. Peaceful the, protests are not interchangeable the, the, with rioters and looters. I will not let you get away with that. Because it's absurd. Well, people who are peacefully protesting. I've, I've been whether it is, okay, hold whether, on, hold whether, on. Let Mark respond. Let Mark make his point. Richard, Richard, let me finish. Let me finish. What you're watching on the video, you're watching people that this is not the first time that they've conducted themselves in this manner. And you kind of wonder why there's a lawlessness in this community. I, is this the first time that somebody has broken into a, a window and stole something? Is this the first time somebody threw rocks at the police? Is this the first time they shot at the police? First time that they actually aggressively started fires and looting? No. This conduct didn't start because you had a law-abiding citizen that all of a sudden got caught up and now I'm going to turn into a habitual criminal. These are people that have already, they've just been lying in wait for this opportunity. And some of them are citizens that live there and some of them aren't. But to say that they didn't start out in the peaceful demonstrations is something that you cannot say and neither can I. But you cannot, yeah, but I you think, cannot but making, but say you're, that some of the police you're, demonstrators you're, didn't participate. The assertion that you're, the problem is, the problem is in the premise that you're asserting. You're asserting that all these rioters were sitting at home saying, oh, look, we're going to wait to riot. Oh, now's the perfect time. Let's go riot all over the place. No. Well, we, I think there are those individuals I don't think they're that advantage. smart, Richard. I, I, I think, think it's so Mark, need can I finish? Wait, let, look, Richard gets the last word and then I got to go. <laughs> and here's, here's what it all boils down to, Megan. Peaceful protesters were protesting because they want justice for Freddie Gray. All right. Uh, and let's be honest, if it was the opposite way around, if Freddie Gray had hit the police officer, he would be arrested immediately. It's been six, almost 10 days, and we still have not had one arrest. And no matter what anybody wants to say about the evidence, the fact is he his vertebrae wasn't broken until he was shackled by the police and in the custody of police, meaning they made a critical mistake and somebody should go to jail for it. Well, and, and that is may. a justice of those people but out there Richard, fighting for it. Richard, they may. They may. And they
they don't know whether somebody's going to get arrested. He was shackled at the time when his vertebrae was broken. I know, but you don't know whether somebody's going to be charged or not yet. That's and the question should, about whether this is premature. Exactly. Because exactly. they are investigating. Exactly. If it was the opposite way around, the community, person of the community would get arrested. And that's the, what these community members out there saying tonight. Uh, th which, which, of course, you're implying. Uh, that, uh, are, you're impl what, are you implying that there's a race element here? That's what you're implying, No, correct? I'm implying that. The, I'm not. I'm no such thing. What I'm saying is that this is the story was the opposite way around. If the police were hit by somebody, the person would get arrested immediately. These police somehow so, brutalized so, this individual. All right, because that's and not what you said earlier. Arrested. Earlier, you you said it. If if this were, if this were black men who had done this to a white man that there would have been no i never said that you you did in your talking points prior to our nine o'clock show so i just want to get you to clarify so you're not saying this is a race issue you're saying this oh no is a, i think there is, is a uh, megan i've always i've been we've we've done this a couple times and i always say the same thing i think that there is a big problem between community and policing and we've got to resolve it but it requires everybody coming to the table and saying we're going to have a real honest conversation about what's not working and clearly all across the country we're seeing this happen week after week, this system that we have set up here is not working. Well, I, we, you see it week this after week. This is not week. the first so black so man to get shot two, and killed. The last two incidents we saw, those those cops were placed under arrest and are awaiting trial. And that may and this, happen and, here. There's been no and, decision but it happened not long to ago. charge We haven't even cops. seen an autopsy. Richard, the, this, the, Freddie the police Gray is in the ground and buried, and we still don't have an autopsy because it's been, the autopsy's been done, but the public cannot have access to the autopsy. So you don't trust autopsy. the African-American officials Judge that Napoli are in charge of Baltimore. Judge Napolitano said, Judge you don't Napolitano trust, said you don't it best in the 9 o'clock hour. Mayor, you don't trust the African-American police commissioner. You don't trust the African-American majority, minority police force. And I think that is that's a it's a very very far stretched assumption, Megan. I'm being very clear here, saying that there seems to be a problem in this system. That's what I'm saying. How is there There's a problem, problem in the when system? You don't, these cops might all get charged. You could see all six of and them. And they charged. should. And it should. They should and, be. They and should then be, what would you say to the minimum. people out on the street rioting? Over but why what? would they take this to that a grand jury? Long, why haven't we seen an autopsy? Why haven't we seen a report, four? Megan? Richard, all we right, haven't I seen go. a, the report. Yeah, well, we haven't seen now, one because now we're watching the SWAT teams appear on this on the screen. You guys stand by. Thank you.